Okay. First of all, as you can see, as I'm scrolling up and down on the grid area, this this um, piano roll on the side goes grey, showing me which note a horizontal row I'm on. Yeah, that's useful. You've got up here this far left button called Solo Editor. Um, if you go into this MIDI part to edit and click that Solo Edit button, everything else will mute in the song apart from this bit of data that you're working and editing. Okay, so that's very useful. Um, there's also this speaker icon called Acoustic Feedback. We'll come to that later. That simply means that uh, when it's activated, when you are penciling and drawing in notes or moving notes around, you hear them. You hear them as you click on them, you hear them as you click to input input notes, and you hear them when you're dragging them up and down in pitch so that you can kind of go... Loo -loo 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 -loo. But I'll put a VST instrument in now so that all these things that we're going to learn about inside here to do with snap and the tools and the quantize, um, put this cursor back in the middle and centre it so that you can actually hear it. So let's close this edit window. Okay, here's our MIDI track and the out here or up here in the parameter column out, yeah, out is assigned to not connected. Now um, MIDI tracks in Cubase are freely assignable um, you can, unlike in Logic, where you have VST instrument tracks, which are, which uh, software instrument tracks, which only can address software instruments, and MIDI tracks that address external MIDI equipment. Um, Steinberg does it differently. Cubase, um, any MIDI track can be assigned to an external instrument via a MIDI port. For example, here's some MIDI ports, or to an internal VST instrument. So let's add a VST instrument. We go to Devices. VST Instruments, and this little window opens, the VST Instrument Rack, as I like to call it. Now, a little gripe here. Since Cubase VST f you know, first came out, there's a lot of windows that open in Cubase, and Steinberg, for some utterly unfathomable reason, makes it so that every single one of these little windows and boxes that opens defaults to not always be on top. So if I, uh, so every time um, you open a new window in Cubase, one of these smaller windows that sits over the top of stuff initially when it's opened, right click on anywhere on the grey frame area and make sure it's ticked as always on top. If it isn't, just right click and put the mouse over this always on top and click with the left button and the VST icon, the SX whatever, Cubase icon disappears and it's now not going to disappear when I click on this other window. Uh, what would normally happen is irritatingly it would disappear behind this and you think the damn thing's closed and it's not. So there we go, a little gripe. Because, to quote the film Aliens, I like griping. Okay, so let's put in a VST instrument. I'm going to choose something that you'll all have, which is Monologue, which is a Steinberg provided instrument, basic dual oscillator synth, VA modeling, or whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to choose, by clicking on that, I'm going to choose uh, Acid Bass. Okay, and again, with the instrument when it pops up, every single instrument that you open freshly, always click on this grey area and make sure it's set to always on top so it doesn't disappear out of sight behind other windows okay right now we've we've added our instrument and chosen a patch close that vst instrument panel and back on our arrange page you'll see that this folder track has appeared see the little folder icon there folder tracks store things inside them basically we'll get into folder tracks in another episode but uh, basically when you add a vst instrument if this uh, folder track isn't already there, it will be there now, and inside it is Monologue. So close the whole folder track for now, and we'll leave that alone. We don't want to get into that now. We'll come back to that in a different episode, okay? Um, but just to open it out again, there's Monologue, and below it, it's defaulted to show a couple of child lanes, because these are children of the main one. Yeah, You can use this plus button to open up another child lane, like that, yeah? And these are controller lanes that work across in a linear fashion. And for example, the first one is the master out 
of the monologue synth and I could get the pencil tool and just draw in some master volume changes for that instrument in the track automation area here. But let's get, we'll leave, we don't want to get into that whole track automation thing for now. That's, that's a whole other couple of episodes because that can do some really cool stuff. But for now, let's leave that. Close this folder and let's concentrate on what we're learning about now, which is the grid and the snap and the tools and all that business. Yeah. So we've got fags, we've got coffee. Oh, lovely. Did you make the... <laughs> did you make it yourself? Yes, with a little help from Ainsley. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I've rubbed that out. Hang on, edit, undo, delete. Okay, let me choose the arrow tool. Here we are. Here's a couple of blank MIDI parts that are left over from when we were doing that stuff about snapping and, you know, the whole way the grid works from the previous episode. Uh, before we do that, make sure that monologue in your output here or here in the track parameters column is assigned as the output for this MIDI track, okay. which it is. And now let's go back in to our MIDI edit window. Okay, so here we are back in the editor. We've assigned the monologue synth to this MIDI track and we're going to now show you how things work in terms of putting in notes and messing with notes and the whole snap and the grid and quantize business inside the edit window, the key edit window or piano edit. Yeah. Okay, first of all, you've got a snap button here, which if it's off, the grid defaults to 16th. With the snap button off, I can grab the pencil tool, I can draw in a note, and I can begin it anywhere because there's no snap. So I'm going to start it there, and I keep holding down with the left mouse button and draw it out, and there is no snap in terms of drawing the length. It's completely free. I can draw it as long or as short as I want by holding down the left mouse button, and there is no snap. There's a note. I can change the length by going for the arrow tool and I put the mouse over the end of the note and this double arrow thing appears and I can drag it shorter or longer like that okay that's without the snap on so I'll grab the rubber rub it out now let's put the snap on and the quantize comes into play and it's set to quarter note so if I grab the pencil tool if I click anywhere inside this area between this quarter note and this quarter note division like here, it will snap the note to the nearest left quarter note vertical thing. Yeah, so oh, hang on, it's a tiny little note of only 128 in length. That's because I've got the length quantize set to 128. So let's set that something to more something to uh, more visually realistic. Let's set that the length quantize to eighths. Grab the rubber and rub that little tiny note out. Okay, quantize is set to quarter notes quarter notes, length quantize set to eighths, I grab the pencil tool and when I click it will snap the note to the nearest nearest vertical eighth divider like that and the note that has been put in is, an, is uh, a quarter, uh, sorry, uh, it will snap it to the nearest quarter note vertical divider and the note that's been put in is an eighth in length and if I increase the quantize to eighths and the vertical grid then shows eighths and you can see the note I put in is exactly an eighth in length. 